Hi, this is Johnny. We're coming again with a Bible study. The one we're studying now is Protecting Your House from Pest. It follows the first book I ever wrote was Building Your House. And now we're going to try to keep the pest out, which means evil spirits, bad attitudes, that kind of thing. Last week, we put on the breastplate of righteousness, and that's to cover the heart because the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In Paul's writings, where he said, talked about the works of the flesh, and the works of the flesh are manifested in our bodies or in our, in our flesh. It's things that we do. Some of it's inside that you can't see. Some of it actually comes outside of our bodies that people will see and know exactly what we're doing. If we make a habit of them, then they can get down into our heart or into our inner man, into our innermost being. And we want goodness, we want righteousness to be in our inner man, in our innermost being. So let's talk about these works of the flesh. So if they're in there, we can get them out today. Now as I talk about these works of the flesh, you will know if it's in your life or not. The first four are sins of lust. And Paul said, these are, these are wrong, you need to get them out. And there are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, and lasciviousness. I think we all understand these words. Maybe not lasciviousness. So let's go over them quickly. Adultery is having an, having an affair or having a relationship with someone that's not your husband or wife. Fornication is any type of sex sin. It's bestility, it's incest, it's different types of sexual sins. Uncleanness, I'll let you figure that out. It's sex that is unclean, whatever type of sex that's unclean. And I think you have a, a good knowledge and a good mind so you know what I'm talking about. And lasciviousness is lewd emotions that you have or that you create in another person. You can create lewd emotions with what you wear, words that you say, maybe even how you walk or how you flirt. There are different ways of creating lewd emotions and that's lasciviousness. So we want to stay away from the sins of lust. Now the Bible teaches that Sex is not a sin if it's with your marriage partner, your husband, or your wife. The next two sins are sins of impiety or superstition. And these sins are actually sins against God. And they are idolatry and witchcraft. Now we know idolatry is when we worship an idol. And we can make idols of a lot of things. We don't want to do that. We don't want to make idols of anything in our life. And we, we don't want to bring idol images of other gods into our homes because the Word of God teaches so clearly that when we worship anything that is not the true and living God, we're worshiping demons, and we certainly don't want to do that. Then witchcraft, the Bible is very clear on witchcraft, and, and what it is, and it says that it comes from the word pharmakia, which means pharmacy or sorcery. It has to do with dealing with evil spirits, with magical incantations, with casting spells and charms upon one by means of drugs and potions of various kinds. It also means uh, enchants were used to inflict evil, pains, hatred, sufferings, and death or to bring good health, love, and other blessings. Well, we don't do that. We, we believe in good health through prayer and through following God's nutritional laws. God said in Deuteronomy that you shall not be found among you anyone that makes his son or daughter walk through the fire or to pass through the fire or that uses divinations or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all these that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And abomination means something that's disgusting, that's unclean, that is not something that a Christian wants to have in their life. So we don't want to have witchcraft, 
or idolatry in our heart. We want to get everything out. The next nine sins are sins of temper. And these have to do with our, a great deal to do with our emotions. They are hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, and murders. Now, you might think, well, I know what all those mean. We know that hatred is extreme dislike or ill will or holding grudges. Variance means discord, quarreling, debates, and disputes. Emulations is striving to get ahead of everybody else. We want to be at the front of the line. We want to be better than other people. And we, it's just a rivalry spirit in religion, business, or society. In other words, it's that spirit that makes you want to keep up with the Jones or keep up with the Smiths or keep up with whoever your neighbors are. The next one, wrath, means rage, determined, and lasting anger. It means fierceness, and it's like you go to bed angry, you get up angry, you hold this grudge against people, you're always mad. And the Bible says the way to get rid of that is don't let the sun go down on your wrath. So we want to put away all wrath and anger before we go to bed at night so it won't grow a root of bitterness in our innermost being. Seditions is one. Seditions is parties and factions, popular disorders or riots, stirring up strife in business, government, or home. It's just confusion and strife and keeping something going all the time. Heresies is a party or disunion, a doctrinal view at variance with the norm. So it's like you just want to be different from everybody else. You don't believe like anybody else believes. You don't believe like the Bible says, but you have heresies. Then envyings is ill will and jealousy at the good fortune of another. That's when we see our neighbor blessed or we see our friend blessed. And we just get really ill about that because it wasn't us that got the blessing. So we don't want that. We don't want jealousy in our heart. Then murder. Murder means to kill, spoil, or mar the happiness of another. And you don't have to actually commit murder to be guilty of this one. You can mar someone else's happiness and take away the joy that they've had. And that's like you're murdering them. The last two are sins of the appetite. And the first one has to do with drunkenness. That's being a slave to drink or having drinking bouts or just living drunk. And we know that this has caused a lot of children to not have proper food to eat because daddy or mama was drinking up the money that should have bought them food. So this is not a good thing to have in our heart. It's not a righteous way of living. And then there's revelings. Revelings are lascivious, which means sexual, and boisterous feastings with obscene music. So it's like really partying, eating and drinking, and just what we think might be a good old time. But it causes heartache and confusion and can actually harm your health. These are the works of the flesh that we don't want to get in our heart. We want to protect our heart, and the way we protect it is with the breastplate of righteousness. Now, when we put on the breastplate of righteousness, it covers our inner man, and we can help get those things out. We want to pray and ask God to remove any of these works of the flesh that might have gotten down into our heart so we don't continually do them over and over. And the Bible says that God wants us to become the righteousness of Jesus Christ. In fact, he made a way for you to become righteous so these sins are not in your life, so they're not causing confusion and causing hurt, causing pain, causing sorrow and disillusionment. So, But we can have a good life with the breastplate of righteousness covering our heart and protecting it from all these evil sins, these evil pests 
that would like to get into our house, our spiritual house. I hope you've gained something from this lesson today. If you have any of these sins that's in the middle of your heart, you can just pray a simple prayer and just say, Dear God, I'm sorry for these sins. I don't want them to stay in my life. And I ask you to cleanse me right now of each one of these sins that I've allowed to come in and that you would help me to put on the breastplate of righteousness so that I can be the righteousness of Jesus Christ, just like the Bible says. Thank you and amen. I'll see you again next week on Turnaround Tuesday. Let God turn your life around today. Bye.